Algebra 1, 13.1b. We're going to talk about equations as ax squared plus bx equals 0. And we're going to solve by factoring. So the quadratic form of an equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. But when that c is equal to 0 itself, the standard form of the equation, the equation becomes ax squared plus bx. If that c is equal to 0, we don't need to waste our pen writing it. We just don't even put it in the equation. And we can factor this equation and use the principle of zero products to find its solutions. So if you're really confused right now, you got ahead of yourself. And you can check this video's description for links to previous similar or helpful videos on this topic. There's going to be links to chapter 6 where we did factoring polynomials. And chapter 6 when we discussed the principle of zero products. And the previous video that we just did talking about quadratic equations in standard form and how you can tell if they're a quadratic equation or not by looking at them. Okay? The principle of zero product says that if two factors have a product of zero, then at least one of the factors must be zero. For this equation, 20x squared minus 15x equals zero, we factor it first. and can factor out as a 5x times 4x minus 3 equals zero. So we set this to equal zero on the outside of the parentheses, and the side that's inside the parentheses we set to equal zero. That's using the principle of zero products. This is self-explanatory. If 5x equals 0, then x must be 0 itself. And then on this side, the 4x minus 3 equals 0. What we do is, because this is a minus 3, we add 3 to each side to eliminate this as a 0 pair. Now we've got 4x equals 3. We divide both sides by the coefficient 4. This becomes a 1 right here. So we've got 1x equals 3 fourths. Now that would be a negative 3 fourths if this was a positive 3. But because it's a negative 3, it came out as a positive 3 fourths. See? And we can check them by plugging in the 0 into the original equation, or the 3 fourths into the original equation. And if they equal 0, then we did it correctly, and we know they fit. See? This ends up being 20 times 0 minus 15 times 0, so it's 0 minus 0. And after we do all of our math, after plugging in 3 fourths here, we get 11 and a fourth minus 11 and a fourth, and they're OK. So the solutions are 0 and 3 fourths. So for the quadratic form of an equation, here you can see it written up here above our equation. What happens is any quadratic equation in this form, or in this form where it's factored, it's always going to have 0 as one solution and negative b over a as the other solution. Look at 15 over 20 is 3 fourths. See? So they're saying if, it's, if this is a positive, then you're going to have that negative ba. Because we started with a negative, we ended up with a positive. See? But it's still going to be b over a. See that? Let's try it again. So we can solve 5x squared plus 7x equals 0. We'll factor it first as x times 5x plus 7. This outside parentheses becomes one side set for 0, x equals 0. And inside the parentheses is set to equal 0. And we solve them. This is self-explanatory. We don't need to do anything with it. But for the 5x plus 7, if we subtract 7 from each side of the equal sign, this is going to become a zero pair and we can get rid of it. And now we have 5x equals minus 7. We divide each side by the coefficient 5 and we get negative 7 fifths. x equals negative 7 fifths. See? 7 fifths. b over a. See? And because we started with a plus in this one, we did end up with a negative down here. See? Our solutions are 0 and negative 7 fifths. Let's try this one. Now we've got 8x squared equals 2x. Well, what we need to do is subtract 2x from each side. See that? Using inverse operations, this becomes a 0. And now we've got 8x squared minus 2x. Now we can factor it. We don't want to use that principle of zero products until we've factored first. So even though it was already like this with something on this side of the equal sign, we wanted to factor it first, okay? So now we've got 8x squared minus 2x equals 0. 
it could be factored as 2x times 4x minus 1. See? 2x times 4x is 8x squared. 2x times minus 1 is minus 2x. See that? So now we're going to set this side to equal 0, the 2x, and the 4x minus 1 to equal 0 using the principle of zero products. And this has to be 0 for the answer to be 0. So x is 0. So we've got that one set. And on this side, we're going to add 1 to each side of the equal sign to get rid of this and create a 0 pair, right? So now we've got 4x equals 1. We divide both sides by the coefficient 4. That turns into a 1. So now we have x equals 1 fourth. See? And because we started with a negative, we have a positive 1 fourth. We can plug them in and check them. And if they both come out to equal 0, we did OK. And our answers are, our solutions are x equals 0, x equals 1 fourth. See? Negative 1 fourth. See? Well, this would be positive 1 fourth, wouldn't it? Because when we did this, it came down as a positive. See? Because that was a negative. So it's always going to be, the solution's always going to be x equals 0 or x equals b over a or minus b over a. It's going to be one of those, depending on if you started with a negative or a positive here. All right? If you start with a negative, then it's going to be a positive. If you start with a positive, it's going to be a negative because of, because of when you're doing your inverse operation, see? When I took away that 2x, it became a negative here, see? When I had to add, when you had to add, like over here, we had to add the 3, then it became a positive, see? So it's whatever your inverse operation is going to have you doing, okay? Now, that principle of zero products is the multiplication property of zero. That's all. You might hear a teacher call it MPZ for the multiplication property of zero. It's the same thing as the principle of zero products. All right? And I have a question for you. Why are they calling these quadratic equations when the x is, has an exponent of 2? Quad means 4. Well, it refers to the square box with four sides. The area inside is x times x, or x squared. And there's four sides to this box, so it's a quad. See? That's how it happened. All right? So our next video is going to be 13.1c. I'm going to talk about equations that now have the plus c at the back end of it. All right? And check this video's description. Uh, we did quadratic equations in standard form and how to tell them apart from non-quadratic to quadratic. And all the Chapter 12 videos that uh, discussed relations of functions, there's a link to my gradient math playlist for functions, and there's a link to set builder notation in case you forgot how to do that because that was a few chapters ago. And there's even a translation playlist link in here because when we ha were graphing the parabola and it moved, it shifted, when we grafted that U-shaped parab parabola and it shifted a direction, you know, side to side or up or down or whatever, that's a translation. So there's a link to my 8th grade translation playlist so you can peek at that and understand that more, okay? So, again, I hope this was helpful. I hope I'm helping you understand uh, if for some reason you're having a problem, my best advice is to go back and watch those videos that are in this description. When you don't understand a movie that you're watching, when you watch it a second time, you see things that you didn't see before, all right? So try it. See what happens. Maybe go back and then go forward, all right? Keep your chin up. We're going to make it. Bye.